Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to implement the most simple rate limiter algorithm. And that most simple rate lim limiter algorithm is a token bucket algorithm. We are going to implement it using Java. First of all, what is rate limiter? Rate limiter in simple terms is a way to avoid your system from getting misused. Now, how would your system get misused? Imagine a scenario that you open a company and in that company, you have a REST API call, which you expose for the outside world. Your company does fine and it slowly starts to gain popularity. Now, one fine day, a bad guy comes into the picture and that person thinks, can I make hundreds and thousands of API calls to your service per second? And that person can easily do that. Now, what will happen to your system? All your resources, all your CPU, RAM, hard drive will start to get to serve that particular bad guy. And it will not serve the, the actual customers. So you have to avoid the denial of service attack. That is somebody attacking your system in a way that others useful users are unable to use it. The other is, and which is most commonly used is around the quota and the monetization part. Now, since your API is getting popular, you want to pay your bills, you want to pay the bills for the servers, for the virtual machines, for the salaries. How do you do that? You would monetize your API. You will say that, hey, if you want to use a free version, then you can only have 30 requests per minute. If you want to have a lowest tier of subscription, we'll have 60 requests per second. And if you have the most premium subscription, then you can even have 500 requests per minute or any of the approaches. So you can have different monetization approaches as well. So what you need to do is you need to keep count of the number of requests being made in a particular unit of time so that you can monetize and you can restrict people if that limit is breached. So that's the overall idea. And for that, what we'll do is we'll use the most common algorithm, which is the token bucket algorithm. And the reason for it being very popular is because it's very simple to use and it does not consume a lot of uh, your resources. So it should not happen that your token bucket algorithm, the rate limiter itself starts to consume 80% or 50% of your uh, RAM and the CPU usage. It should be very simple. So that's the overall idea. Now let me first talk about what is token bucket. Token bucket, first of all, by definition, it's a bucket. And first understand it theoretically and then we'll see how it works in the code. So it's a bucket. Imagine you have a quota of 60 requests per minute. Then what we'll do is every minute will fill your bucket with 60 tokens. You can imagine 60 coins. And whenever a new request comes or a new person wants a data, then we'll take one token from that bucket and then we'll serve that person. So if there is no token left in the bucket, we'll deny. We'll say that, hey, there is no token left from you. And if there is enough token, then we'll subtract one token and then we'll serve the API. So that's the overall idea in terms of token bucket. This is how it will look like in the at the very high level view. That you have a backend server, somebody makes a REST API call. Then first thing you do is check, do you have enough token or not? So if the number of token is greater than zero, you accept the request, you give non to 429 response. That is, you can uh, give 200 or any of the accepted responses. Or if there is not enough token available in your system, that if the number of token is greater than zero, it's not greater than zero. Then you will reject the request. You will give 429 response, which corresponds to the, that you are giving too many requests to my system. So that's the overall idea and that's what we'll code. If you look how it looks like in the code. So imagine you have a Java based application. You can have anything else as well. You have a controller. And in your controller, you have a method called as get employee. So somebody making an API called something like slash employees. And that person wants to get all the employees. So the first thing you do in the first line of code is 
to consume a token and if you are not able to consume a token you throw an exception otherwise you proceed further so that will be the first line of code there are many programming techniques to not do in this way sometimes you have a it would be good for you to search online the concept of interceptor so sometimes you put your code in the interceptor or sometimes in real world you have a ready made solution to do the rate limiting so you you can put things in the interceptor and then have your regular code after that so that's the overall idea and this is the part which will code now this is token bucket algorithm in a nutshell we'll try to see what happens in that try consume method so the first thing happens is that you whenever a request comes to you first of all you, we don't have any scheduler running we don't want to have any background process running what we'll do is we'll maintain two variables the first is the last refill time what is the last time when i refilled my request and what is the next refill time now initially the last refill time will be time equal to 0 and the next refill time will be let's say 1 minute now the moment a request comes to you you first of all check whether my current time stamp is lesser than the next refill time or not if it is lesser than the refill time then you just proceed that there is you are not going to refill my bucket again or if your time has gone past the next refill time in that case first of all you refill the bucket and then you go to the next step so it's a on demand thing you are not going to fill your bucket every minute but what you do is that if a request comes to you the, at that time you, you refill your bucket so it's a on demand thing and that helps you because you don't have to run any background process imagine you don't get any request for 2 hours in those cases you will not even refill your bucket for 2 hours and when a new request comes to you at that time you will see that okay i didn't have enough of the request for such a due such so long duration so now i can refill my bucket so that's how you do current fill time and the next fill time and the moment you see that you need to refill the bucket you update both the last refill time equal to the current refill time and next refill time would be again plus 60 seconds or whatever unit of time you have selected then you check if the number of tokens are greater than 0 then you continue otherwise you fail so that's the overall idea it's a very simple code if you think about it that you are just maintaining last refill time and the current refill time and of course you need to have the bucket size as well that what is the bucket size overall so you just maintain a few variables and then you can get your job done now we'll quickly move to the code part and see how the code looks like the code will be in java and i will not import any library anything it will be plain java code why do you need library for such a simple code anyway and just focus on the algorithm part because i'm not going to uh, get into the object oriented concepts or we can talk a lot about object oriented but because of the limitation of time i will concise it in a way that you see the algorithm an algorithm is very simple what we already talked about this try consume method so we'll focus on that now let me quickly switch to the ide and show you this is the token bucket algorithm implementation what i have here is a token bucket class and the only thing which i am going to implement is a try consume method so whenever a request comes to you you would want the try consume method to be working for you and there are few constants which i need that is the number of request which you want to honor and the window size i want 10 requests per second so here it's 1 into 1000 because i'm considering a millisecond and the maximum bucket size because you would in my case i don't want my bucket to be overfilled so i always want that at a particular point of time my bucket size should be 10 so that's what i have assumed you can even change it based on what you want to and this is a test method because whenever a request comes to you instead of this you can even have controllers but the whenever a request comes to you you will try to have a bucket dot try consume method so this can be inside a controller it can be inside a main method wherever you want to you can put it and this is the main class which will have all the magic so what this main class has are a few things one is number of token available that is the number of token available in the bucket number of uh, requests overall which you 
which you want to support per minute or per second. So this is the number of requests which you will refill. The window size, window size will be per second, per minute or whatever. So remember I chose one second and the last refill time, the next refill time and the bucket size. So these are the few things which I have uh, selected. It is a constructor. So whenever you create a constructor, the first thing you do is to fill your bucket whenever you initialize your uh, token. And this is the simple algorithm that if the number of token available is greater than zero, then you subtract the token return true. Otherwise, you return false. So that's a simple approach of uh, trying to consume the uh, token. And the refill method is also simple that if the current time is less than the next refill time, then you return. Otherwise, you make the current refill time equal to equal to the current time and the next refill time is equal to the current time plus the window size. If it is per minute, then you know, you will add by 60 seconds. If it is per second, then you will add by one second. So whatever the window size is, you will fill after that duration. And the number of token available, again, what you will do is you will you know, current bucket size, bucket, whatever the max bucket size, which is uh, available. So min of, because you don't want to have the number of token more than the bucket and uh, min of these two, number of token available plus uh, number of uh, requests per second. Or So basically you are refilling. So that's the overall idea, which you would want to do that you refill a bucket. So this logic can, you can tweak as well uh, based on, you know, when I search online, some people actually do not have upper cap on the bucket size. They just increase the bucket size to anything. They just refill at a particular rate and consume at a particular rate. They don't have any bucket size, but I chose that there should still be a maximum bucket size. So you can choose based on, you know, whatever the requirement is. It's better to be defensive at times. So you can do that. So that's the overall code and in my test class what I have done is I have created the constructor of token bucket and then and these are a few variables here and there and the uh, inter interesting part is that what I'm doing is I'm running a loop for 10 seconds. For 10 seconds I'll run a loop and I'll try to consume the data and I'll see that how many requests I was able to consume. So you know I'm keeping a track of number of uh, you know, consumed values and number of non-consumed. So in 10 seconds, number of values consumed. So basically my intent is to support 10 requests per second. So in 10 seconds, I should support 100 requests. So that's the overall idea, which we'll do. So yeah, let, let's run the code and see how it works. So I have run this code. Let's see the output. Now my code is running. It's has mix of trues and false. So let's just wait for the, so you can see number of requests consumed are 100 in 10 seconds. So it is actually working in a way which we wanted to. So that's the overall idea to have a token bucket algorithm where you have a bucket, you are consuming at a fixed rate and whenever a request comes to you, the first thing you do is to refill and then you subtract. Now the interesting thing here is that I am using a local variable and of course this local variable is not thread safe. You need to have a synchronization here. You need to take pessimistic logging and locking if you need to. But I have not covered those aspects. I don't want to make this complex. But remember if you if you really want to have a good performance system then a good a correct system then you would need to take lock and make sure that it is it is not decremented incorrectly. So let's say there are multiple threads decrementing value, the same value. So if 10 threads decrement the same value 10 times parallelly, then the value will not be decremented by 10. It might be possible that it would be decremented just by 8 or 9 as well. So that can happen. So that's why you need to take care of the multi-threading part. And I would encourage you to read about it separately. In the distributed world, if there are multiple machines running together, so how do you maintain this variable? You can put this in Redis. So in Redis, you have increment and decrement counter. So I would encourage to read about that and that will also help you to maintain the 
and manage the concurrency. Now let me quickly move to the last part of my video. This is the high level overview of the system that a particular person will request one of the backend server because you will have many backend servers and then the variables, the vari whatever variables we talked about next refill time, last refill time and the number of units in seconds, all the variables which we had at the class level will move to a common place so that it could be used by other machines as well. So there are multiple ways to store it. You can even store in Redis. Sometimes people use in database with logs and no logs. So all these things are al already in place and uh, you can just use it directly. So you request one of the servers, you store in a centralized place and so that other servers can also access the same data. Now there is very common library which does it and that is bucket 4j. So I recommend you to check out that library and that library does exactly the same that number one, it has facility of in-memory variables as well and it's highly optimized library the way I have explained it's not, it is similar to that but it is much better than what we just talked about and it has facility of uh, using the centralized storage as well. So you can give a connection string of Redis. And, it, and all your machines will automatically connect to Redis and put all these data into Redis. It has facility to put that data in the Postgres as well. So if you have a use case where you need to put things in database, you can even do that. So all those things are already in place and I'll highly recommend you to check that library. But this is the overall idea. Even at the very low level, a very simple code will work fine for you. So yeah, that's all from my side for this video. I think this video would have helped you to implement the rate limiter rather than uh, seeing the high level design. It's equally important to see what happens at the code level. So I hope this algorithm was very much clear to you. I encourage you to check further the open source library bucket 4j where it connects to the centralized system. And also I encourage you to see the multi-threading part. I have not covered that in this video. But you understand that you have one single variable and you are decrementing in parallel threads. So it might not be thread save. So how do you decrement or increment a variable in a multi-threaded environment? So that's a separate task and I would encourage you to look out for that video. Didn't want to make this video complex, but I hope this video was very helpful for you to understand how the rate limiter works and what's the importance of rate limiter overall. In the real world, most of the times you would be using some some of the ready-made solution like Kong or the rate limiter by Azure and AWS. But what if you have to code your own rate limiter? What if you are yourself a rate limiter company? How do you do that? Or if you have in-house rate limiter or there is a very small use case where it does not even make sense to uh, buy a new infrastructure. So how do you do all those things? That's what is covered in this video. I hope this video was very helpful for you. Till the next time, bye.